Howdy everyone. So you can see that I've got this hole is obviously now drilled and I've got the bolt in it and this wing, this left wing angle of incidence has been set and I've checked my flap coming up and down meeting with the, the bottom fuselage, fuselage skin, things of that nature. So I did make a small adjustment on this wing. It was nothing more than basically pushing down on this rear spar to get it to seat down in between those forks a little bit deeper. I noticed between the two sides there was a little bit more of a gap underneath here between the rear spar and the fuselage skin. So I double checked the angle of incidence and uh, I made a little bit of adjustment here to get that correct and it now matches very closely to the other side. And then I went ahead obviously and drilled the hole and put the bolt in. So since I made a little bit of an adjustment on this wing and I went ahead and drilled and bolted the rear spar on both wings, I decided to go ahead and re-verify the forward sweep one more time. And so again, like I had done before, I've got a plumb bob here at the wing tip. I went ahead and hung a plumb bob off of the root and made a mark. Hung a plumb bob from the root, made a mark, and I still have the plumb bob out here at the wing tip. And then I ran a piece of string directly under the plumb bob, taped it to the floor, pulled the string, <clears throat> pulled the string nice and tight. I have it pulled nice and tight and underneath this plumb bob, have it taped. And then when I verify the root locations, you can see it's directly over my mark, which is right there. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. It's a very small mark. And it's the same with the other side at the root location. The string is directly over the mark, which is right there. So, again, pleased. Um, everything looks really, really good. So, I'm done with wing sweep. I'm done with angle of incidence. I've already, as I've said before, I've already gone ahead and installed the aileron in the flap. And I verified that they still operate as they should. And now that the angle of incidence is set, I verified that the flap comes up and mates with the bottom of the fuselage as it should. I had reclamped my straight edge piece. I've actually labeled this and made sure I kept it from back when I built the wing. So this is the exact same piece I used before. I used that piece across here and extended it out past the aileron. This was uh, like we had talked about before, you set up your straight edge using, using the tooling holes and then you hold the aileron in line with that. With the aileron lined up correctly with your, with your reference lines, that is now in trail with the wing. Pull the flap up perfectly in trail with the aileron and as I do that, it comes up very nicely and touches the bottom of the fuselage. I've done that on both sides. So with that done, of course you want everything real world as possible. So I've got, the, I've got all the correct hardware in the different locations for the ailerons down here so that the ailerons are in the correct position because 
as you recall from when you build the wings, you use washers and you could move the aileron in and out this way using different washers where it, where it attaches at the hinges. So you've got a little bit of adjustment here. You want to maintain a gap between the flap and the aileron, of course. And you have to be careful, you have to be mindful that the aileron does not come out too, um, it doesn't stick out past the end of the wing because your wing tips won't fit correctly. Your wing tip will come all the way back here and you need a gap in here as well. So that's all set on both sides. So now I'm in the process of actually connecting the linkage to the controls here. I've got the pilot control, of course, is one piece. I don't have the co-pilot control in just yet. It's just the rod that slides down in there for now. But I'm going to connect the ailerons to this linkage. I'm going to start getting that all set up. So that's the next step. Good times. Glad to be back. And I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Howdy, everyone. Continuing with fitting the wings and getting the rigging set up. I have, of course, I still have my level across the, uh, the main spar. And of course, it is still level. Now I'm setting up my ailerons, or the actually I'm setting up the, uh, the push rod, push pull tube length for the ailerons that runs inside the wing. So I've got the pilot stick at 90 degrees, and of course that's 90 degrees to the level fuselage. I was using my fancy magnetic bubble level, but then I realized that my digital level is also has a magnetic base, so I just have them both up there. When you put your when you put your level on the stick, make sure that they run across the fuselage 90 degrees to the longitudinal axis. I think that's correct. You want it 90 degrees. You don't want your different levels skewed because then it's going to pick up a measurement fore and aft. And you don't want a fore and aft measurement. You strictly want a left to right type of measurement. So make sure that you've got these, your digital measuring devices where you need them. Okay, so the fuselage is level. Got my stick at 90 degrees. And then at each wing tip, I have my, my reference. Of course, I verified that these are nice and straight, these pieces of wood. I've got them clamped center of the tooling hole. So there's a tooling hole here that this is lined up with. And there's a tooling hole here that this one is lined up with. I've got an eighth inch piece of plywood here just to keep the wood from rubbing on this hinge so that the aileron can move freely. And then when you come down to this end and you look, you sight down the edge of the wood in relationship to the very tip of the aileron, which is right here. You can see that that's perfectly, well, I don't know if you can see or not. It's, it's hard to tell from these angles, but that is lined up perfectly in trail with the wing. And I've got the exact same thing on this wing tip here. Again, I've got my, my straight edge, which has been verified straight, and I've got it clamped to the wing in line with the um, tooling holes, the spacer to keep it off of the hinge. And then again, if you look down edge the, the top face of this wood in relation to the very center line of the aileron. It is in alignment. Again, I'm not going to be splitting hairs. So now that is set up. A couple of things to keep in mind. You have to pay very close attention to the threads on your um, push-pull tubes. So here's my push-pull tube here. There's my rod end, and you can see the threads that are exposed on the rod end. 
you have to look at this rod end and you have to look at the other end of the push-pull tube that attaches, that attaches to the bell crank inside the wing. Look up through the bottom, through the access cover. If you've got, you know, if, if you've got, let's just make up a number, if you've got 15 threads on this rod end showing and you've only got two showing on that, on that rod end, you want to make an adjustment so that they're roughly even. You don't want a couple of threads on this side and, you know, a ton of threads on this end. You want, you want a same number of threads on each end. Now you also want to be sure that you've got plenty of threads threaded into the push-pull tube for strength, but you also want to make sure that you can't unscrew the push-pull tube. So if your jam nuts were to come loose, if you were to rotate that push-pull tube, would it disengage from one of the two rod ends? You don't want it to be able to completely disengage. So I'm gonna, when I take this apart, I'm gonna pull these tubes out and I'm gonna unthread these rod ends and see how many threads I have penetrating the push-pull tube. If I'm not happy with the number of threads that I have actually engaged, I'm gonna replace the rod end with a longer one. If I'm happy with the way that it engages, I'm gonna go ahead and add either a spacer or another jam nut on each one. That way, if the jam nuts were to come loose and the push-pull tube were to spin, it could only move so far and then it would run into that spacer or it would run up against the other jam nuts. So I just need to take up that space so that the push-pull tube itself can't unscrew itself. But I'm gonna verify my thread engagement when I get these apart. But for now, they're set. So now my ailerons are set. Again, level fuselage, 90 degree stick, aileron verified in trail, aileron verified in trail with the wing. So now I'm coming back and I'm looking at the flaps. So again, when I grab this flap and I have it come up and kiss the bottom of the fuselage. You can see here it's a little bit high in relation to the aileron. You can see it right here. So with it touching the fuselage, you can see it's a little bit high. When I go to the other side and check the other flap, it's exactly the same way. So all I'm going to do is, on both flaps, I'm going to come underneath here and this, ignore all of this right here. You can ignore all that. I'm just gonna bend this skin here up toward the fuselage. So when the flap comes up, that skin will touch the fuselage sooner, if you will. If you can imagine the skin of the aileron here, that's gonna get bent a little bit up so it touches the fuselage a little bit sooner. And then when it does mate with the fuselage, when it does come up and finally touch the fuselage, the trailing edge of the flap will be in line with the aileron here. And I'll do that on both sides. And then, when I get to it, hopefully soon, when I make, now if you remember, I'm going with manual flaps. Once I get the skin bent on the flap and I can get the flaps just touching the fuselage and the entrail with the aileron, then I can come into the cockpit and on my manual flap setup, I can figure out exactly where to put those notches to engage the flaps. So ultimately, when the flaps are fully retracted, it should engage that notch 
with that notch engaged in the cockpit. The bottom skin of the flap should be touching the fuselage and it should be perfectly in trail with the aileron, with the aileron in trail with the wing. So that's the plan. So I'm going to, I think I'll work on the flaps now, getting that skin bent to get everything to align. And I don't know if I'll start working on the mechanism at that point for the flaps or not. But anyway, steady as she goes.